Measurement of Angles, Level 1. In the following series of videos, we will learn how to measure angles, classify angles by size, name the parts of a degree, and recognize congruent angles. In this video, we will review how to name angles. We will then go over how to measure angles. In the previous videos, we defined an angle as a figure formed by two line segments, or rays, meeting at a common point, called the vertex. The plural would be vertices. The segments or rays that form the angle are called the sides of the angle. Angles are named by using the angle symbol. You can name an angle in a couple of ways. We can use a vertex, we can use a point located on each ray or line segment and the vertex, or we can also use a single number. Another common way to name angles is by using Greek letters, such as beta, alpha, or beta, instead of numbers. For example, the following angle can be denoted as angle SRT, or angle TRS, or angle R, or angle 1, or theta. The set of all points between the sides of the angle is the interior of the angle. Here, the word interior is Latin for inner. The interior of an angle is the area between the two rays or line segments that define it. The sides of the angle form jaws that extend out to infinity. The exterior of an angle is a set of all points outside the angle. In other words, the region on the plane that is not the interior. Now that we have reviewed the basics of angles, let's talk about how we measure them. Just like a ruler is used to measure a line segment, a protractor is an instrument that is commonly used to measure angles. Angles are usually measured in terms of degrees, radians, grads, or nautical angles. In this course, we will be using degrees as a unit for measuring angles. You can think of the measure or size of an angle as the amount of turning you would do if you were at the vertex, looking along one side of the angle, and then turn to look along the other side of the angle. If you turned all the way around to face your starting direction, you would turn 360 degrees, meaning that you turned around in a complete circle. We will cover the properties of circles in greater detail in a much later video. For now, we will use a circle to visually represent the idea of turning around. This is why we use a circle as a symbol to denote angles. We denote angles by using the degree symbol, which is represented by a small raised circle that floats above the right side of the number, just like an exponent. Now that we know that if we turn around in a complete circle, we would turn 360 degrees, the next thing to understand is the size of a single degree. To get a sense of the size of a single degree, let's take a circle and slice it into 360 equal pieces by using straight cuts that go through the center of the circle. By doing this, we end up with 360 individual angles and each angle or slice would measure one degree. So a degree is equivalent to one 360th of a complete revolution around the circle. So a protractor is nothing more than half a circle broken up into 180 equal slices. A typical protractor will have two set of numbers. The inner numbers start at zero degrees, which is located at the lower right edge of the protractor and increase as you move counterclockwise around the protractor. The outer numbers start at zero degrees, which is located at the lower left edge of the protractor, and increase as you move clockwise around the protractor. We measure angles by placing the center mark of the protractor on the vertex of the angle, and we align one ray or segment of the angle with a zero degree mark at either side. Then, the measure of the angle is given by the number that falls on the other ray or segment. We usually use the inner numbers on the protractor for angles measured counterclockwise, and we use the outer numbers for angles measured clockwise. For example, 
The measure of angle R is 30 degrees. Similar to the measurement of a line segment, the measurement of an angle is denoted in a distinct manner. In order to denote the measurement of an angle, we first write a lowercase m followed by the name of the angle. This is read as the measurement of angle R is 30 degrees. At times, when the context is clear, we can go ahead and denote the measurement without writing the lowercase m. This is rarely done in most geometry textbooks. In these videos, we will be using the lowercase m to denote the measurement of an angle. If we have multiple angles that share the same vertex, like the following figure, we need to use three letters to denote each of the angles. In this example, angle ABC measures 60 degrees. This angle measure is equivalent to one-sixth of a revolution around a circle. Angle ABD measures 90 degrees, and this is equivalent to one-fourth of a revolution around a circle. Angle ABE measures 120 degrees, and is equivalent to one-third of a revolution around a circle. Angle ABF measures 180 degrees, and it is equivalent to one-half a revolution around a circle. Some math courses deal with negative angles, zero angles, and angles greater than 180 degrees. In this course, we will be working with angles that are greater than zero degrees and less than or equal to 180 degrees. When using a protractor, it is not necessary to always align one of the sides of the angle with a zero degree mark to measure the angle between two rays or two segments. Similar to the way we measured a line segment by using the coordinates of the endpoints, the measure of an angle is the absolute value of the difference of the degree measurement that the rays or segments correspond with on the protractor. For example, the measurement of angle EBC can be found by taking the absolute value of the difference between 120 degrees and 60 degrees, or the absolute value of the difference between 60 degrees and 120 degrees. In this case, the measurement of angle EBC is 60 degrees. In general, the measure of an angle is the absolute difference of the real numbers that the rays or segments correspond with on the protractor. For example, if ray BA corresponds with the real number A and ray BC corresponds with the real number C, then the measurement of angle ABC would be equal to the absolute difference of A minus C or the absolute difference of C minus A. All right, in our next video, we will learn how to classify angles by sizes.